that I was feeling it probably bother other people. It doesn't bother me, but I was feeling it bother other people. You know.
you see two dozen sheep? Two dozen sheep? Yes, there were 14 of them. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Oh, well, if you see them, would you give them a message? A, a message for the sheep? Yes. Tell them that the shepherd is looking for them, that they should tell you where they are, and I'll come get them. Thank you. Wait, wait. What is your name, please? Zetsky. And your first name? How soon do you need it? <laughs> Never mind. Forget your first name. I did. <laughs> I am Leon Stepanovich Tolchinsky. I'm to be the new schoolmaster. Is that a fact? I'm very honored to meet you, Leon Stepanovich Tolchinsky. I am something, something sexy. <laughs> will you be staying tonight? Oh, you don't understand. Koyanjikov will, will be my new home. I'm to live here and to teach here. I am, if I may say so, an excellent schoolmaster. Oh, they all were. They came by the thousands, but not one of them lasted through the first night. <laughs> well, it's so hard to blow these. I don't know how the sheep do it. <laughs> you, you said you had thousands of teachers? More, hundreds. We're all stupid. <laughs> We're teachable. During the village, more stupid in all of Mother Poland. Russia. Whatever. <laughs> all good people, mind you, but not a decent brain among them. <laughs> that feels so good. I just opened up my ears. I thought you were whispering. What were you saying? Are, are you telling me that every, every man, woman, and child are all stupid? <laughs> Including me. Talk to me another ten minutes and you'll begin to notice. <laughs> I, I was hired by Dr. Krasinski to teach his young daughter. <laughs> teach his daughter? Impossible. She's hopeless. Nineteen years old and she just recently learned to sit down. She's hopeless. She doesn't even know the difference between a cow and a duck. Not that that's an easy subject, mind you. <laughs> Something is up here. I thought nothing of it then, but when I first read it, I did notice that every word in the advertisement was misspelled. <coughs> I'm, I'm sure Dr. Spritsky will explain it all to me. You've been most helpful since Sinsneski. I enjoyed our chat. As did I, Master Polkinski. He's not the only one who can have private thoughts. I can have private thoughts as well. Trouble is, I can never think of any thoughts to have in private. <laughs> well, I must be on my way. Oh, I'm, I'm sure we'll meet again. Oh, of course. Just mention my name to anyone. That's me, the cheap loser. <laughs> uh, Lania! Blab it all! Nine o'clock in the village of Glenshikov! No, I was well! Wait, no! to have my doubts. <laughs> Perhaps she wrote a letter. 
<laughs> I will look. <laughs> Good morning. How about a nice piece of haddock? Is that a beautiful fish? <laughs> what do you mean fish? Those are flowers. Well, they didn't catch anything today. Why should I suffer? Because the fisherman had a bad day. <laughs> the smells gorgeous. I don't have any letters from your sister, Slovich, but I do have one from the shoemaker's cousin. Would you like that? Is she sick? I hate reading bad news. No, no, in perfect health. Take it. <laughs> Can you believe that my daughter hasn't written me in over a year? But doesn't your daughter live with you? It's a good thing, otherwise they'd never hear from her. <laughs> oh, good morning. My name is Leon Tukhovich Kolchinsky. I'm going to be the new schoolmaster. Michigan the postal worker, Slovich the butcher. Yegna the vendor. How do you do? I was just talking to a, a shepherd named Snetsky. Oh yes, something, yeah. something Snesky. We all know him very well. Yes, he was, he was rather nice. Although, and I hope I don't seem unkind, he was somewhat deficient in his mental alertness. That's Snetsky, all right. He was kicked in the head by a horse. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. When was this? Tuesday, Wednesday, twice on Friday, and all day Saturday. <laughs> and the halibut is three. I beg your pardon. Well, if that's too much, I have a nice white fish for one and a half. <laughs> Perhaps the dialect is a little different in this part of the country. <laughs> well, I'm, 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 oh, I'm very eager to begin my new duties. Well, one of you be so kind as to direct me to the home of Dr. Zubritsky. That way. Like. <laughs> Thank you. Perhaps I'll go in the one direction you didn't point to. A pleasure meeting you all. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. oh hello again. Uh, did you find your sheep? Not yet. Who is that? The new school teacher. Another one? I just met one a few minutes ago. They must be having a convention here. Count Yasevich up on the hill isn't going to be very happy about this. That's right. Count Yasevich sure doesn't like new school teachers. Why not? He's afraid they'll break the curse. What curse? The one that made us stupid since the day we were born. Oh, that one. Yes, I've been stupid for 31 years. What about you, Stetsky? I'll be down 21 next to I. <laughs> and you, Slovich? Uh, 53 for me. Uh, what about you, Yankna? I just turned the corner of 26. <laughs> <laughs> that corner must be 40 miles from here. <laughs> Five. 
five four nine <laughs> eight six seven five three oh nine e i e i e i o. Now let's check your breathing. <laughs> Testing. New technology, I'll never understand it. We'll do it the old-fashioned way. <laughs> Breathe out. <coughs> Question dealing with science. 
Or, or maybe a philosophical question. No, the first one, the first one sounds good. The philosophical question. <laughs> Very well, if you wish. What is the purpose of man's existence? Oh, Lydia! Lydia! Lydia, have you ever heard such a beautiful question? I'm in shock to think someone would ask us a question like that. Yes. But aren't you interested in the answer? Oh, no, not today, thank you. <laughs> Yes, one question like that in a lifetime is more than we ever expected. The answer should be given to someone much more worthy than we are. But it's your birthright. Knowledge is everyone's birthright. Everyone not born in Koyichikov. I don't understand. Oh, well, you would if you knew about the nurse. <laughs> what nurse? No, not the nurse, the purse. What purse? No, no, you don't. Not the purse, the purse. What kind of purse? The kind of a purse that inflicts all the pill out of one of the poor souls, unfortunate enough to be born in this pitiful village. <laughs> what, what do you mean, perhaps a curse? Oh, a curse, oh, I knew it sounded like that. You were so close, Nikolai. What is, what is this curse, Doctor? Linda, open the doors and draw the curtains. No, but I can't draw curtains. I can draw a cat or a fish. <laughs> I can't say that I have. You can't say that even when you can say that. <laughs> now, what is this curse, Doctor? Well, 200 years ago, a curse was placed on this village that struck down every man, woman, child, and domestic animal, including all of their ancestors for generations to come, leaving each and every one of them. And this you'll find hard to believe, with no more intelligence than above on a log. <laughs> Doctor, Doctor, I don't believe in curses. Curses are old wives' tales. Oh, no, no, you're thinking of Neutschka. In Neutschka, all the old wives have tails. <laughs> that was their curse. Ours was all together different. <laughs> but, but what is this curse, and, and who would be so cruel as to inflict such punishment on such a simple village? <laughs> who indeed? It's all documented in the book of curses. <laughs> Get off the <laughs> I thought you said you dusted this. I did. I put dust on it yesterday. <laughs> Read for yourself. The page is marked. <coughs> They're all stuck together. That's because we marked it with maple syrup. <laughs> In the year 1691, in the village of Koyenchikov, two young people fell hopelessly in love. I knew it. Whenever young people fall in love, you know a curse is coming. But surely you've heard all this before. Oh, many times, but we never understand it. It's a very well thought out curse. So what happens next? Oh, yes. <laughs> well... The boy was a young, handsome, but illiterate farmer named Casimir Yauskovich. The girl was the daughter of the most learned man in town, Mikhail Zubritsky. Wait! Nikolai? I've heard that name before. I've seen it! I've seen it on the front door somewhere in this neighborhood! No! <laughs> it's on your front door! Your name is Zubritsky! That means... That the young man in the curse may possibly be related to our... to our front door? <laughs> Mind you, I'm dealing with the intelligentsia now. I continue. The young girl's name was Sofia Zubritsky. May I ask the name of your young daughter? Sophia? Sophia? Sophia. Yes, Sophia. Sophia, the, the identical name of the girl in the curse over 200 years ago. I can't believe that. <laughs> Unless our daughter's been lying about her age. <laughs> The match 
was doomed from the start. When Sophia's educated father declared that young Casimir was illiterate, he forbade Sophia ever to see Casimir again. Six months later, Sophia married a young student, and that winter, Casimir, distraught and despondent, took his life by plowing his own grave and planting himself in. <laughs> Upon hearing, upon hearing of his son's death, Casimir's father, Vladimir Yelskovich, Casimir's father, Vladimir Yelskovich, Casimir's father, Vladimir Yauskovich, who caused people to tremble at the mention of his name. Perhaps next time you shouldn't mention his name. Casimir's father, Vladimir. encumber her faculties. May common sense become uncommon, and may reason become unreasonable. May her children be cursed as well, and all of her children throughout all eternity. And, and may all who live in Klanjikov be born in ignorance and die in ignorance, unable to leave this cursed village until my final vengeance has been satisfied. That would explain why the train doesn't stop here. <laughs> Well, well, my initial impulse was to panic. Even my secondary impulse was to panic. <laughs> to educate is, is one thing, to break curses is another. Excuse me, young man. Are you alright? Yes, I, I'm fine. I was just thinking. Nino, he was thinking! He was thinking. <laughs> Tell us, what's it like? <laughs> Well, I don't, she certainly doesn't. <laughs> Thinking is, is the thoughts that comes to one's mind. It's the process that enables us to make decisions. Decisions? Yes. <laughs> no, I don't think we're capable of those. <laughs> but, but surely you know what it is you want. Well, dear God, yes, we desperately want someone to help us. Well, not so much for us, mind you. We've already lived our lives, but, but for our daughter, sweet Sophia. Did you hear what you just said? No. I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> it was a decision. You wanted to help your daughter, so you thought about it. You are capable of thought. You think. I don't think so. It just sort of came out. <laughs> yes, out of, out of your head, where your brain is lodged. The, the center of thoughts. And, and, and if it's possible, to have even one tiny, infinitesimal, insignificant thought, then, then it's possible to expand those thoughts to ideas, and ideas into comprehension, comprehension into creativity, and finally, supreme intelligence! And would I be able to open up yours? <laughs> I've always had a terrible trouble with yours. When did you know I just... Huh? <laughs> Be firm, Leon. Be staunch. George. George. Patience. Oh. We won't break this curse, I promise you. Okay. By, by the simple, everyday, painstaking work of education. We must begin at once. I should like to start by seeing your daughter, Sophia. Sophia? Yes, Sophia. Oh, oh Sophia. Sophia. Yes, it, it occurs to me that since the curse started with the young Sophia 200 years ago, Perhaps the key to ending it lies with her direct descendant. 
May I see Sophia? Oh, not from here. She's up in her room. We'd have to send for her. <laughs> Do as the schoolmaster told you, Pinyo. Right. Oh, she might be taking her singing lesson. Oh, oh, she takes singing lessons. From whom? A canary. He does the best he can. <laughs> no words, mind you, just the tunes. <laughs> I the understand. The girl, madam, please. Right. Oh, remember, sweetheart, up the stairs and to the left. <laughs> <laughs> the point are most delicate and interesting young lady, not like the others in the village. She has so many interests, she's always occupied. Oh, occupied? With what? Oh, well, she likes touching things. Wood, paper, metal, oh, and she likes drinking water. <laughs> oh, there she is. Master Tolchinsky, may I present our daughter... Master Tolchinsky, may I present our daughter... <laughs> Master Tolchinsky, may I present our daughter, Sophia Irena Elena Zubritsky. Sophia, the schoolmaster. Oh, Miss Zubritsky? Is, is that my breath that it's just been taken away? Oh, is that vision before me human? Or have I too been cast under the spell? Oh, never before have I felt such a stirring beneath my breast. Ooh. <laughs> Watch yourself, Leon. She is your pupil, not the object of your dormant feelings of passion. <laughs> Excuse me. Sophia, do you know what he was just doing? He was thinking. Isn't that marvelous? Yes, Mama. Oh. <laughs> I am Papa and she is Mama. Papa. Mama. Papa. <laughs> Won't you please sit down, Mr. Zubritsky? Oh. <laughs> yes, you can do it, Sophia, just like last night now. <laughs> Come on now. Careful. Yes. 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 Now, Miss Zubritsky, <coughs> may I call you Sophia? Sophia? Yes, oh. Sophia. It's your name, sweetheart. <laughs> um, say... Uh, well, say yes, darling. Say yes. You may call me Sophia. Please, madam. We must allow the girl to speak for herself. Right. Now, I should like very much to be your friend. Would it please you if I called you Sophia? Oh, it's been so long since she's taken that test. <laughs> oh, I, I think she wants to say something. <gasps> yes, darling, yes, you may call me Sophia. Oh, she did it! I'm so proud! <laughs> Please, it's very distracting to the young girl's concentration. Okay. Okay. <coughs> now, I've come a very long way to help you with your education, Sophia. Now, I have every reason to believe that under ordinary circumstances, you have the capability of becoming an extremely bright and an intelligent young woman. That deep within you somewhere is an intellect just crying to be heard. That you have enormous powers of reason. But, but someone has put a cloud over these powers. And, and it is my intention to remove that cloud so that enlightenment may once again shine through, shine through those unbelievably deep mahogany brown eyes. <laughs> but I need your help, Sophia. Will you give me that help? Yes, you may call me Sophia. Oh, oh she did it again! <laughs> Patience, Leon. Nothing in life comes easy. Okay. Now, I should, I should like to start by asking you a few very simple questions, Sophia. If we are to begin your education, it is, is it, it is important that I know at what point to begin. It won't be taxing, I promise you. I would, I would never want to be the cause of a furrow or frown on that fair face. <laughs> <laughs> now then, what is your favorite color? My favorite color? Yes, is it red? Or green, or blue, or orange, any color at all. Which one is your favorite? I used to know this one. <laughs> I'll ask you once again, Sophia. What is your 
favorite color. Why is he being so hard on her? This is not a university. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite color? Yes? Is yellow. Yellow! Her favorite color is yellow. Now, now why, Sophia? Why is yellow your favorite color? Because it doesn't stick to your fingers as much. <laughs> <laughs> I think she must be wrong, Nikolai. I think it must be blue that doesn't stick to your fingers. <laughs> That's, that's a very interesting answer, Sophia. There is certain logic to her response. The fact that that logic escapes me completely doesn't alter the fact that she has something in mind. Now, I'm going to ask you to do something quite simple now, Sophia. I'm going to ask you to make a wish. Do you know what a wish is? Yes, a wish is something that you hope for that doesn't come true. Well, well, perhaps we could change all that. If, if you could make a wish that did come true, any wish at all, what would you wish for? What would I wish for? Yes, Sophia, what would you wish for? I would wish that I could fly like a bird. To soar over buildings and trees. Float on the wind to be carried far away. Over mountains and lakes. Over forests and rivers. To meet people in other villages. To see what the world was like. To know all the things that I shall never know because I must always remain here in this place. Sophia, that, that is the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. <coughs> Don't you see what her wish means? <coughs> <laughs> to, to fly like a bird means to sever the bonds that chain her, chain her to ignorance. She wants to soar, to grow. She wants knowledge. <laughs> and, and with every fiber of my being, from the very depths of my soul, I shall draw forth all my patience and dedication. And I make this promise that I, Leon Stepanovich Tolchinsky, shall make Sofia Zabritsky's wish come true. If you do that, schoolmaster, <laughs> I'd be in your debt forever. As would we. She touches me so. Your, your daughter has such a pure heart and such a simple soul. We must begin her education at once. I shall return in the morning at 8 o'clock sharp. Oh, I, I almost forgot to ask. What shall we begin our studies with, Sophia? I should like to begin with languages. Languages. Languages, of course, even I should have thought of that. Languages, it shall be, my dear sweet Sophia. And what language shall we begin with first? Rabbit, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Rabbit? It's a very hard language. What really would speak it anymore? Even if she can only get a few phrases, that's enough to begin with. Yes. <laughs> Am I through for today? Yes. Then I shall go to my room. Okay. <laughs> Sophia, Sophia, be sure to go around the stool. Oh, my. Oh, that was beautiful. Sophia, come back and do it for the school match. She had his back turned. <laughs> no, it's, it's not necessary. She's already past sitting down and going around chairs. Oh, they're so much smarter than an arty. <laughs> Until tomorrow, then. Never before have, have I looked forward to a morning as much as tomorrow's. I think you're the most beautiful <coughs> schoolmaster I've ever seen, Master Chochinsky. I pray that you don't despair of Kienchikov and that you stay with us forever. Okay. <laughs> ah, she found the door! Oh. Right through! <laughs> I've never seen Sophia so radiant! Lydia! <laughs> Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I'm not even thinking what I'm thinking. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, I think that our Sophia's taking on a liking to the new schoolmaster. <laughs> if, if that is true, Dr. Spritsky, then, then standing before you, before you is the happiest man on the happiest planet in the universe. But, but tell me, is, is she spoken for? Spoken for? Yes, does she have any suitors? Any young men desperately in love with her? Oh, we, we 
me? No. No. We don't speak of such things. But surely there must be someone. There is no one, not even him. Oh! Him? He did not mean him. He simply meant someone else who isn't him. There is someone. I, I know it. Please, you must tell me. It's of the greatest concern to me. If I tell you who him is, you must promise never to tell anyone it was I who told you it was him. <laughs> I promise. Oh, then. <laughs> have you ever heard of Count Gregorov Kolyichikov? I can't say that I have. You can't say that even when you can say that. Count Gregorov! Yes! Yes! I can say it! <laughs> now, who is this man, Doctor? Oh, he's one of them. One of the ones who... You know, he put the nurse on us. You mean he is young? The last of his line. Tell me about him and Sophia. Well, he proposes marriage twice a day. Twice a day? 7.15 in the morning, 8.20 at night. He cares for her that much? No, he cares only for avenging his ancestors. If a Zubritsky marries a Yaskovich, they will be satisfied and the nurse will be over. <laughs> Does Sophia care for him? Well, she said no for many years, but she can't resist much longer. <laughs> well, the poor girl would like to sleep late just one morning. <laughs> I understand. If, if, I have to, if I have a rival, I am more determined than ever to break this curse. God bless you both for your faith in me. Tomorrow, the education of Sophia Zabrinsky begins. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, I, I almost forgot to ask. What about logics? <laughs> no, I think we'll be comfortable right here. Thank you. <laughs> Schoolmaster, I hate to bother you, but would you be so kind as to ask it again for the question? It makes us feel important. Yes, of course. Are you ready? Yes. What is the purpose of man's existence? I think I'm sorry I asked. Oh, me too. Wait a minute. I, I think I know. I think I know the answer. To the purpose of man's existence? What are you talking about? It's true. When he first mentioned it, nothing came to me. But now, now I thought of something. Oh my gosh, what if I'm right? Tell me, doctor. Tell me what you think the answer is. I, I think it's 12. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! <laughs> 12! <laughs> 12! <laughs> Sorry, I can tell by your expression. <laughs> 94! 94! <laughs> I think you missed the point. No, it's below 100. Even I'm not that stupid. <laughs> 92? Don't it... think about it. We'll discuss it when we get to philosophy. Until then, we get some rest. Good night. 91. <laughs> 37. Right. We could have solved the answer. We could have made a fortune. In that case, that's it was 32. Or, or 29. Or 47. Yes, I believe it is 47. We must go to the Lord.
was going to stay and try to break the curse, <laughs> but when he said 12, <laughs> I knew it was time to go. So what I must do now is I must try to forget, forget about Sophia. I must. Schoolmaster. Sophia, where are you? Down here. <laughs> I had to see you once more. Without a wrap? In, in the cold night air. You'll come down with a chill. Oh, I never catch cold. You don't? I try. I've just never learned how to do it. <laughs> Be grateful, Sophia. There are some things that are not worth knowing. I know that something has happened a long time ago that prevents me from knowing what happened a long time ago. If only you knew me the way I might have been instead of the way that I am. But if you are not the way you are, then I would never have come here to help you become the way you might have been. <laughs> Watch you, Leon. You're beginning to think like her. Could you, could you ever care for someone who never became the way they might have been? Could I, could I ever care for someone who never became... Yes, 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 I see what you mean. I see what you're getting at. <coughs> yes, yes, I could. I would. I shall. I will. I have. I do. <laughs> Is that rabbit you're speaking? <laughs> it's hard to follow. If it sounds like gibberish, that's, that's because you do that to me, Sophia. When, when thoughts come from the heart, they seem to trip over the tongue. Then I must watch who I walk when you speak. <laughs> I must go. Everything depends upon tomorrow. And, and if not tomorrow, then the tomorrow after tomorrow, and all the tomorrows for the rest of my life, if that's what it takes. No, it all rests upon tomorrow. If we fail, I shall never be able to see you again. You'll never see me again? What do you mean? I don't know what I mean. I seem to have thoughts, but they disappear when they reach my lips. If, if I reached your lips, I would never disappear. Would you like to kiss me? With all my heart. No, I meant with your lips. <laughs> and you have better suggestions. Hurry, Leon, hurry. Okay.
I, I must find some comfortable lodgings. Ha, ha, ha. 
me, Terry Oskovich. Oh. <laughs> Over oh, a year, a little late. I've been married 26 years now. <laughs>
cannot be taught. You must leave Kanchikov at once. Never without you. Well, take me with you tonight. But but the curse. It cannot be broken. But we can live in the swamp, and I and we can eat brown roots, and I will become old and ugly and more stupid and more ignorant, and never be able to love you. But at least we'll be together. <laughs> Not exactly what I had in mind. <laughs> We're lost. No, Sophia, no, Sophia. I will teach you tomorrow, I promise. Yeah, I wish I could love you. <coughs> you will, tomorrow, I promise you. Until tomorrow. <laughs> I wish she'd sleep in the kitchen. <laughs> Where does it say that? I can see. <laughs> 
<laughs> the paper's all damp. <laughs> Maybe your dog did that. <laughs> no, he's out choking. He only does that inside. <laughs> milk, fresh milk. Get your fresh cow's milk. milk. What's wrong with your cow? Oh, Han, he's tired. I've been milking him since 4 o'clock. <laughs> You get a little more cream that way. <laughs> cream, fresh cream, right from the top. Drink it straight from the spigot. Two of the Cream, fresh cream, right from the other. Cream, fresh cream. I gotta go find my sheep. Oh yeah, I got a couple of sheep in this morning. I need to go butcher them. Good luck. <laughs> Here, sheepy, sheepy, sheepy. Here, sheepy. <laughs> Last 
tonight, I decided that the task set before us was one step beyond impossible. I knew that I would leave and that I would fail you, just like all those who have failed before me. But, but, looking into your eyes this morning, I know there's no life for me without you. Therefore, we cannot afford to despair. We cannot think of failure. Only a miracle can save us, Sophia. But, but with a, a majestic, supreme effort, we must try to make that miracle happen. What's the miracle? Well, a, a miracle is a wish that God makes. You are a miracle, Sophia. You mean God wished for me? In one of his most sublime moments. <laughs> now come, we must begin. Sit. Okay. Now, this is a primary book of mathematics. It's used to teach very small children very simple problems in arithmetic. Do you think it's too advanced for me? I don't think so, Sophia. We can't go back any further than this book. <laughs> Let's begin. Hold that. Thank you. One is is the figure, the word, the symbol for a single item. One Sophia, one Leon, one book. Now, Sophia, I'm holding up one finger. Now, I'm holding up another finger. One plus one is two. Would you repeat that for me, Sophia? Which part? <laughs> one. One. Plus one. Plus one. Is two. <laughs> is two. <laughs> yes, yes. We're, we're, we're making headway. Ooh, slow, invisible headway. I'm very, very proud of you, Sophia. Are we ready to go on? Yes, history, please. I hope we can master as well as I have mathematics. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I honestly don't think we've quite conquered mathematics yet. There, there are sir, some problems that could come up. Let's continue. Now, one plus two is three. Am I finished with one plus one? <laughs> well, you are if you remember the answer. I remember the before. Is it necessary to remember it again? Of course it's necessary to remember it again. It's, it's necessary to remember it for always. You mean you'll always be asking me how much one plus one is? No, no. Once you tell me, then, then we can move on to other things, like one plus three and one plus four and so on. But if you don't know the answer to one plus one, then the answer to one plus two is meaningless. Do you know how much one plus one is? Of course. Then why is it necessary for me to know? <laughs> Certainly if you have such esteem and affection for me, you will always tell me the answer whenever I need it. <laughs> but I won't always be around to tell you. You have to know for yourself, in case other people ask you. No one around here asks questions like that. Even if they did, they wouldn't know if it was the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> That's because they are cursed with ignorance! And we are trying to lift that debilitating affliction! You're getting angry with me. What's the point of being educated if you get angry? When you didn't ask me such questions, you always said the loveliest things to me. Is this what it's like to be intelligent? No, Sophia, it is, it is I who not being intelligent. It's frustration and impatience that drives me to such crude behavior. Forgive me. Let's start from the beginning again, okay? Okay. Now, watch me careful. One plus one is two. Repeat. One plus one is two. Repeat. <laughs> no, don't say the word repeat. Just repeat the part before I said repeat. Yeah. <laughs> now. Watch me carefully, okay? <coughs> one plus one is two. Repeat. What were you like as a little boy? 
<laughs> what was I like as a little boy? <laughs> You're shouting again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, well, I, I was inquisitive. I was probing. Wondering why we were put on this earth and what the purpose of man's existence was. I've had enough of that! Now, now, Sophia, you must stop asking me these questions. Our time is nearly gone. Then how am I to learn? Sophia, you must answer what I ask you, not what you want me to answer. Then I want to learn what you want me to know. Yes. Why can't I learn what I want to know? Because what you want to know is of no significant value. But, but what I want to teach is acceptable knowledge. Knowing what you were like as a little boy, not susceptible knowledge? Of course not. It's it's of no significance at all. It's much more interesting than that which is significant. <laughs> but I'm not trying to interest you. I'm trying to educate you. I know. But while you fail to educate me, you never fail to interest me. I find that very significant. <laughs> There's nothing like the logic of an illogical mind. <laughs> Let's try one more time. Okay. Are you ready? One plus one is two. Repeat. <laughs> She must be speaking rabbit like a bunny boy now. How much longer is this going to take? I haven't sold a single sausage all morning. Shh. Well, good morning, Dr. Zagretsky. Good morning. <laughs> What's going on? I believe he's teaching her gymnastics. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Zagretsky. I have an urgent letter from Master Tolchinsky. Quick, can't you see this is a school zone? But I have an important letter for him. It's marked urgent, so I only went to three wrong houses first. He's busy. Bring it back later. I don't like the way it's going, Nikolai. I just don't like the way it's going. Well, then let us pray. Let us pray to God that this young man will deliver us from bondage. Very religious on the side, semi-religious on the other. <laughs> quiet, quiet, everyone. Schoolmaster Tolchinsky has something to say. Please, God, let this be the answer to our prayers. Amen. Ah, uh, women. <laughs> Master Tolchinsky, is my daughter, well, you know, empty or full? <laughs> She is the same as always. <laughs> I, I have only moments to ask this, so I must ask this quickly. Because of my deep and unbounded devotion for your daughter, Sophia, <coughs> I wish to ask for her hand in marriage. I ask this of you now while I still love her. In a few minutes, I may not know the meaning of the word. When, when the clock in the church steeple strikes nine, I hope you have an answer for me. He's a nice young boy, very ambitious. Olenia, what do you think? Well, if he can't break a simple curse, how's he going to put bread on the table? Oh, yes. And what about Tremble? <coughs> you know, Tremble, Tremble. Up on the hill, the one who throws the water. Yes. Michigan's right. It's his curse. He would never permit such a marriage. Unless there is one chance. If a stranger were to marry a Kalinchnobite before he became like us, then he would be free to take her away from here. Oh, I never knew that. Well, it was added to the curse two years ago to make it more interesting. You'd never see your daughter again. But you know she's happy and getting smarter every day. Oh, give it, doctor. Give her your permission. If you don't give it to her, give it to me. Well, it's a decision, and I can't make those. Let's leave it to God. Let God make the decision. Yeah, what do you do? <laughs> oh, having 
my last thoughts. <laughs> One final pleasurable moment of reason. <laughs> then I was right. A wish is something that you hope for that doesn't come true. <laughs> I, I am sorry, Sophia. I cannot help you soar over mountains and lakes. But but I will not leave you. I, I will remain here forever, not not basking in the light of your beauty, but cowering in the darkness of my own ignorance. For that is the measure of my esteem and affection for you. I do anything to save you from this calamity, anything.
No, this is an old suit. If, if I went into politics, I'd need whole new clothes. <laughs> this is just one doctor's opinion, but when you catch a curse, you really catch a curse. <laughs> Sophia! Sophia, yes. Don't stay up too long. I'd like for you to go up on the roof and take the canary for a walk. Okay? <laughs> so long. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Sophia. Weren't we in the middle of a lesson when the clock bells began to chime? What were we saying? Yes, you said that you loved me and that I should savor and keep it as a memory forever because soon you may never love me again. Do you not love me now, Leon? Love you? Well, I'm not quite sure I know the meaning of the word. Well, perhaps if you kiss me, would you like to? Oh, with all my heart! No, I meant. I know, Jen. Oh, oh, Leon, the less you know, the better you kiss. <laughs>
talking about me? <laughs> you like him, don't you? Yeah. Better than me, right? Right. <laughs> Admit it. I would give up all my wealth and powers if I could be the hero. I wouldn't have to wear this dumb outfit. <laughs> People would applaud when I come on. Not even listening to me, are you? No. All you care about is getting those two kids together. Well, I hope it's raining when you leave here. <laughs> oh, 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 good evening, Count. Yelskovich, yes. You remember me? Something, something, Tolchinsky. Listen to this conversation. <laughs> what is it? Something. Well, I couldn't help overhearing what you just said. Now, I want you to know that although I've lost most of my intelligence... Oh, your intelligence. <laughs> All of it, yes. I am not without some feelings. It pains me to know that being so disliked makes you so unhappy. Well, that's easy for you to say. <coughs> You don't like me, do you? <laughs> well, I don't dislike you. But do you like me? No, not much. Well, maybe because no one likes you, is it, maybe that's because you never do anything or redeem me. Why not? I don't know. Come on. <laughs> I was brought up that way, I guess. <laughs> My father taught me, ever since I was a little boy, if you want to hold your power over these people, you must never be nice to them. Always make them fear and tremble. <laughs> well, did you like your father? Oh, he was all right, I guess. You didn't like him very much, did you? Don't tell anyone, but when I was nine months old, I tried to crawl away from home. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, there you are. Then the answer to be light is to do something redeeming. Isn't there something good you can do for the village? You mean like a barbecue? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's a start. But... I, I was thinking of something on a much more larger scale. Like, oh, lifting the curse. Lifting the curse? But it can't be lifted unless Sophia marries me. Or another Yelskovich. But there is none. <coughs> I'm the last of the line. Unless you had a son. But I'm not even married. Listen, I may be a villain, but I don't around. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm so unhappy. <laughs> you don't have to be married. You could adopt a son. <coughs> adopt a son? <coughs> Me. You? Sure. I'm single, available, ready and willing. I'm not very intelligent, but I will be once the curse is lifted. I've always wanted a son, someone to take on fishing trips. <laughs> I never really had a dad. Oh my boy, Leon, I spill you like anything. <laughs> oh, that's okay, Dad. <laughs> and then people would like me, wouldn't they? They do now. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Look at their faces. <laughs> See? See, they're all smiling at you. <laughs> Even up there. <laughs> yes. Yes, I see. Oh, God bless you. You don't know what this means to me. Come here, you. Oh. <laughs> well, well, then let's go and sign the adoption papers and notify Sophia's family. 
Are you ready, Daddy? <laughs> Let me watch their faces smiling at me just once more. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank all of you. Maybe we could all have lunch together next week. <laughs> in the meantime, you're all invited to my son's wedding. Oh, dead. <laughs> the first thing I'm going to do is have your shoes bronzed. Oh, Daddy! <laughs>
thought. Uh-huh. What's that? Suppose they lift the curse and find out I was really stupid in the first <laughs> I have a souffle in the oven. Oh, <laughs> souffle! <laughs> oh. Okay, now, Love to all remember that if I if I still appear to be stupid, I'm only pretending. Hey, it's it's still all part of the curse. It's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> Count, you must be so proud of him. He's been my son only ten minutes, and he's not giving me a moment of trouble. <laughs> all right, all right, please, everyone. Let's begin the ceremony. Oh, boy. We are gathered here today, dear friends, to witness the joining of two souls in holy matrimony. It is the goodwill and the generous benevolence of our dear friend, the Count, that makes this blessed union possible. Oh, thank, well, thank you, you Count! Oh, now will the groom step before me? That's you, my kind! And will the bride please join him? No, you're Sophia, not the bride! Winger, what's the matter with you? I hope you never see your chance. And who giveth away this bride? I give it away this bride. Why do you give it away this bride? And well, he asked it for her. I got it my head, and he taketh her. <laughs> you, Leon, son of Count Gregor Mikhailovich, Bresnowski, Fyodor Yalskovich. <laughs> It's a holiday. Oh, oh very, very kind oh, of you. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Do you want to take Sophia to heaven to hold from this day on? I have. No, I do. <laughs> you do? No, you do. He will. He does. Say it. He will. He does. I said it. No, don't say what I said. Say what he said. <laughs> what he say? <laughs> I do. You say, I do. My papa says I do. No. <laughs> I'm beginning to hate this curse, I swear to goodness. <laughs> do you, Sophia, take Leon in sickness and in health, for better or for worse, for as long as you both shall live? I do. With brains like that, she could have gotten anyone. <laughs> <laughs> the ring, please. I have it. The ring that Casimir Yalskovich was going to place on a young Sophia 200 years ago. I know more. Please, Leon, place the ring on Sophia's finger. Mm, he's not going to be very handy around the house. <laughs> there we go. That's okay, nice. Now repeat after me. With this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. Just the bride and the groom, but thank you. Oh, you're welcome. With this ring, I thee wed. Now, before I pronounce this blessed union, is there anyone among you with just cause or reason why Leon and Sophia should not be joined in eternal wedlock? No, no do you? No. no. Then with the power invested in me as Chief Magistrate of the Village of Kilenchikov, I now pronounce thee... Well! Oh! Maybe there's just one tiny little thing. You have an objection to this marriage? You bet I have. This boy is not my son. Oh. This son is not my boy. Oh. Oh. What are you talking about, Father? You think I'm crazy? Why should I give up a cute little bundle of little brains like her? <laughs> but, but the adoption papers. They're false. Oh. You trusted me so much, you didn't even read them. I have the documents as proof. I did not adopt him, I divorced him. <laughs> we are not father and son. We are no longer husband and wife. <laughs> Why 
our daughter almost married a divorced woman. Oh. <laughs> but fear not, dear friends. I may be a venomously treacherous snake, but I'm not a wet blanket. There will be a wedding. No, my daughter will not marry an imposter. An imposter, no, but a Yaskovich, yes. You've pledged your daughter's hand in marriage to a Yaskovich, and a pledge once given must be honored. That is law. I helped write it myself. <laughs> I even voted for it. And I am the only true Yaskovich here. Leon, will you not object to this marriage? What can I do, Sophia? I am helpless. Come on, come on. I haven't got all day. Say the words. Let's get this over with. It's been a hotel book for this honeymoon for 200 years. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Doctor. Truly sorry. Tolchinsky never helped him escape Destiny's finger. And what, what was his name before Tolchinsky? Yauskevich. Yes, yes. Oh, oh, oh. Those oh. distrualities will haunt you every time. Oh, Leon, do you realize what this means? Uh -oh. No, what? He will soon enough. This time my daughter is going to marry the right one. <laughs> <laughs> Take your spot next to Leon. <laughs> it, it didn't say that at all. It's actually a bill from my former college saying I still owe them for last year's tuition. Hurry, Leon, hurry. I had planted the bombs in your minds. Now I pray God for the explosion. All right, places, everyone, places. I don't want to spend the rest of my life marrying this girl. <laughs> Are we all ready? Ready! You, Leon, I do. Do you, Sophia? I do. Any objections? No one objects! Please, bidding starts right here, right here, right here, right here, right here, right there, 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 right I now pronounce you man and wife. <laughs> Don't 
Well, I'd say right about now. <laughs> I have never heard a noise like that in all my life. It felt as though my head had cracked open. Like what? Like my head had cracked open. I don't think ask it. Go ahead. Ask it. But what if we're wrong? And what if we're right? Ask it. Ask it. Cat? Cat. C-A-T. Cat. Dog. Dog. D-O-G. Dog. My God, it's a miracle. Miracle. M-I-R-A-C-L-E. Miracle. <laughs> Name five world capitals. Athens. One. one. That's one. Bucharest. Two. Two. Cairo. Three. London. Four. And oh, one, 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 one more. One, one, one more. God, take it all Thanks, God. The quality of mercy is not strange. It dropped it like a gentle rain from the heavens. That's so beautiful. <coughs> Did you make that up? I think so. Where else would it have come from? Nikolai, I feel strange. <laughs> A weakness in my knees, a dizziness in my head. It's okay. Your blood is just pulsating from all the excitement. Sometimes it can cause the adrenaline glands to over secrete, leading to a sudden rush to the head. <laughs> <laughs> Nikolai, I, I had no idea you were such a brilliant doctor. I'm just an average doctor, Elenia. I worry about you because I love you. <laughs> and I love you, Nikolai, even when I could not say it in my heart. I knew I loved you. Oh! <laughs> Are you now the room of Warwick King that I am? I am more than I have ever been or ever dreamed possible. I love you, Leanne. And I adore you, Sophia. <laughs> it's over? The curse? It's over? See for yourself, Count Gregor. Land! I should have put my money into land. It can never go wrong with real estate. That depends, of course, on the political situation. Because the czarist government wants to reform is a very difficult Yes, of course, but I still have to Such brilliant conversation. My power over them is gone. Power is a useless weapon over the enlightened Count Gregor. We are all equal citizens here in Konyachikov. Um, Nikolai, I I believe you mean all men are equal citizens. We women have been subjugated long before there are any curses. No, Linda, you know I love you, but that's a very radical point of view. <laughs> <laughs> No, Sophia, it was it was your pure heart and trusting soul that gave me that faith and courage. It was love that destroyed the curse, Sophia, not my puny efforts. I do not wish to argue the point, Leon. I just feel that you should allow me room to express my own views. And I welcome your views, though I think you should have all the facts before you become so adamant. <laughs> <laughs> Well, schoolmaster, you got your wish. Yes. Well, what about you, Count Yelsevich? What are your plans now that you're intelligent? Well, I'll probably have to work for a living now. <laughs> well, cousin, my congratulations. I wish you a long and happy marriage. Thank you, and may I wish the same good fortune to you. Please, I've been cursed once in my life. I know when I'm a law. <laughs> <coughs> well, it's not such a bizarre story after all. <clears throat> now be honest, haven't you, haven't you ever met someone who was from a place like Koyanchikov? An aunt, an uncle, your neighbor, your boss. <laughs> Although, once the curse was lifted, we became like any other small town in any other part in the world. Susceptible to all, to all the ups and downs of normal life. Well, take the magistrate, for example. After serving for two more years in office, 
Greed got the better part of him, and he was convicted for taking bribes for political favors. <laughs> After serving two years in jail, he eventually sold his memoirs for a fortune. <laughs> Mishkin gave up the Postal Service to become a writer. She wrote a 600-page story on the curse of Koyachikov and sent it off to a publisher. Unfortunately, it got lost in the mail. <laughs> Solvich, with all his life savings, bought up four more butcher shops in a village that really only needed one and went broke in less than a month. <laughs> Confirming his greatest fear is that, with or without the curse, he didn't have much brains. <laughs> Yegna, a shrewd businesswoman, put all her money into real estate and now owns 16 houses in Kolenchikov, including Count Gregor's. And, as an investment for the future, she bought land in six other small towns that had curses on them. <laughs> Snetsky, with his newly inquired intelligence, found all his sheep, well, most of them. <laughs> he gathered his wool and became a wealthy philanthropist. <coughs> and as for Count Yaskovich, he became more and more lovable. <laughs> and is now the local monk. <laughs> on the drought seasons, he goes up on the hill to pray to God to throw water down on us. <laughs> As for my dear mother-in-law, Mrs. Zabritsky, she suddenly found a voice of her own and became the first woman mayor of Koyanchikov and eventually council governor of the northern Ukraine sector. Her husband sees her by appointment only. <laughs> And Dr. Zabriskie, well, he became one of the finest doctors in all of Russia. He became the personal physician <laughs> to the royal family themselves and was recently elected to the Academy of Sciences. However, he still has problems opening up jars. <laughs> and as for Sophia, she was and still is a miracle. Well, not that all our days are blissfully happy, and not that we don't have our differences, but she has in turn become my teacher. And I've learned that there is no spirit on earth, evil or otherwise, that can destroy a pure heart of devoted love. Well, as for myself, I remained a school teacher and dedicated my life to the education of the unenlightened. I beg. After all, there are so many Kalanchikovs in this world. <laughs> <laughs>